Hi there, Valerie Shodin here, and I'm excited to show you something that's new to me, and it may be new to you too, and it's these the Viva color sheets uh, made with dye. They're watercolors, they're transparent, and they're super vibrant. So I was sent this packet by the company, and they asked me to give an honest review. I'm not getting paid anything more than that. I wanna show you how I'm going to use this and what these little things can do. Okay, here's what came in the set in this cool little envelope. It was this, it was wrapped in plastic with this. Now I want you to get an idea of the size. So this is um, about two and three quarters inch by five and a half. And it's roughly about a quarter of an inch deep at the thickest, maybe just a touch more. So. What I really like about this is the portability and handiness of it all. I often travel, and when I travel, I always take my journal. So what's nice about this is this is an A5 size that this could fit in here. I think even this could fit in here too. So I could put it within there, or I'm not sure if these would get wet or a Ziploc bag in there too, but really it fits right inside of a journal. I also have this camping journal that I have, and it has a pocket, so all this could just fit right inside the pocket there. This could go on the outside here. So as far as handiness and travel easeability, I don't think I can get any better than this. So that's one big plus. Now, what about the purpose and function of the color sheets themselves? One thing it came with is this little palette. This is has kind of a glossy, not tight, quite glossy, but a finish on here. So this is for mixing in case I wanna mix. Then there's these colors and they're listed with this sheet in between. And so there's a sheet to protect it. And a little does go a long way. These are really saturated. But one thing, and they say this up front in the instructions is, what you see on your little sheet is not necessarily what you get. So what I did is I cut a piece of watercolor paper the same size so this can fit right in here. And I do this with all my watercolors and paints when I first learn about them. That's make a color chart. And I like it all on one sheet here. Uh, and so I can refer to, to this and what do I want to use because it might not look the same here. For instance, that violet looks like the sap green, but it's not, it's really this color. So it's kind of amazing. All right, now there's one color that I thought it could use here that it didn't have, and that's more of a brown. The burnt umber uh, from my sheet was uh, a little more like burnt sienna. So what I'm gonna try first is I'm just gonna try and use it how I would use it in my travel journal, my camper journal. And that's, I didn't have my paints with me, so I didn't color this, but now I do. And I can use either the water brush, or I also like to carry a thin brush with me, at least this thin, and then possibly this thin, because look how small those are. But let's see how this brush does coloring this. Now, I always like to have a little scrap of paper to kind of blot or test, and I can't seem to paint a watercolor anything without using a paper towel or a soft rag or something. Now this right here was done with these same colors that I mixed, and I really, of course, my favorite color is probably turquoise. That peacock blue does not look peacock blue on here, but I'm going to just kind of make it light or I can add some darkness really easily. Now this paper here is not a watercolor paper, it's a mixed media paper. It takes watercolor and water-based media pretty easily here. Okay.
I cut a strip of watercolor paper and make kind of an accordion journal. And sometimes I take this size, this is really the typical size that I do travel journaling in. So let's say, I'll just draw some circles here. So I wanna show more of a wash kind of thing here. And let's do this, let's go in with the color I haven't used. How about the violet? And I'm going to wet the inside of this circle for a wash. Now this is one thing I found with this color, it's the magenta. The magenta is super strong and also staining. <laughs> so let's just add a little bit there. This time I'm gonna add a little bit of the orangier colors. I'm trying to show you more colors in here. Well, let's try this chrome yellow. It's, it's very different than the others, but you get an idea here. Okay, now here, I'm gonna try, it might be too late. Let's see, add a, just a little bit of salt in there, just like you could a regular watercolor. I waited a little too long, but you can see where the water is pooling around the salts, and that should help lift up some of the pigment. Let's see how that works. Okay, pretty good. All right, I think that gives a good idea of what you can do with this and this. Now for my bullet journal, I'm gonna do a test page here with this and with watercolor and stencils. Here's a star stencil that I designed for Stencil Girl products. And what I use for this is a cosmetic sponge. This one's used, uh, but it's clean. So I put it in water and then I squeeze it out there so it's not drippy, but it's still wet. And then what I do is take a paper towel or a cotton cloth and squeeze it out again. I don't want any drippiness on this. And then I'm just gonna stencil a few stars around so you can see how this works. And I'm gonna use, let's say, some of the chrome yellow. And then usually I test it on something, let's see right here, okay? So 
so I can just test there in a tapping motion. And then if I want to add some orange, I can, um, let's see, even go to the vermilion here and put a little orange on top like that. Maybe put another one up there. Okay, so I have this stenciling really easy. And one thing I noticed with this, with these colors is there's one color here, it's the magenta and it's very staining. Uh, so that's the one thing I would say to be careful of. Okay, now what I wanna do is, this is my banner stencil. Once again, with Stencil Girl products. And I want a little more brown in there. So if I want more brown, you'll notice there's not a brown brown on here. This burnt umber. I could add black to the burnt umber. Or the other thing that makes brown is if I mix this Persian blue with the burnt sienna. And I'll show you that here and how you can mix it on this little mixing paper here. And then some of the Persian blue. I said Prussian blue, I'm used to that. <laughs> and you see what a nice brown those two colors make. It's real warm. And it's watered down, so it's not gonna look as dark. Like this is pretty dark here, but not as dark as you would think. Okay, so this here, go like this and I'll test here and you see it's not as not that dark I might have to mix more let's see does it look yeah I need to mix some more there was a lot of water in that Okay, that came out more orange than I wanted. So I'm gonna go over with the blue. And just go really lightly where the shadows are. You can see how you can also shade even with a sponge. Just wanted to show you that. Okay, there's that. Thank you for joining me for this review of the Viva Colors, transparent watercolors that are portable. Visit ValerieShodine.com for more inspiration with stenciling, workshops, painting, art journaling.